Hi everyone, this is Elena of The Witch's Box, and I'm here today with another episode of Witch's Booktube. And today we're going to be talking about a book called A Druid's Herbal for the Sacred Earth Year by Ellen Evert Hotman. Beautifully designed image. Love the book. It's about 200 pages. So I've got our bio here and I'm probably only going to read half of it. It's a really extensive bio that you can find for yourself over on Goodreads. It may be on Amazon as well, but I suspect that the bio on Amazon is probably a little shorter. But I'm going to read you half because the other half is just a long list of all the stuff that she's written and she's done, which is great. Ellen Everett Hopman is a master herbalist and lay homeopath who holds an MED in mental health counseling. She is a certified writing instructor through Amherst Writers and Artists. She is co-chief of the White Oak Druid Order and was vice president of the Hinge of Keltria, an international druid fellowship for nine years. She is the founder of the White Oak Internet Mailing List, an online druid ethics study group, and a co-founder of the Order of the White Oak. She is also a co-founder of the Northeast Druid Coalition. She is the author of a huge list of books. Okay, I'm not going to list those books, but I will give you a link to those books in the show or the notes below. But I'm also going to include a link to the White Oak Druids organization so that you can read information about her and Druid Druidry there. And yeah, so that's her and her knowledge base shows in this book in a really beautiful way. So I want to talk about the book. So this book, but let me back up. Last week, we talked about the Wheel of the Year, a book that was specifically just on the Wheel of the Year through the lens of Celtic tradition. And it was a beautiful book that I highly recommend because it was a book that not only covered the Wheel of the Year the way other books have and do, but then had an extensive section on the astrological happenings at each point in the Wheel of the Year, which I thought was a beautiful new layering that I haven't actually seen in many books before. This book covers the Wheel of the Year, and instead of doing that with the astrology, does it with the herbology. And I thought it was fantastic. It seemed to fit really well without me actually planning it, because normally in my head, I know what book I'm going to read next, but the last couple weeks have been really busy. And so the minute I finished last week's book, I just like grabbed a book off the top of the pile, which is a huge pile, which is weird. The pile is huge and it gives me both a little bit of a sense of stress, like, oh God, I'm never going to get through it, but also a sense of thrill and excitement, like, oh, look at all those books. In any case, normally I know what I want to read next. I didn't this week because I've just been, my head's been in other places. So I just grabbed this book off the top and it seemed to go really well. Like it was just, as I was reading it, it felt like another another angle with which to approach the Wheel of the Year from that I really appreciated. It was like the Wheel of the Year giving more wisdom. I just loved it. So let me cover really quickly the table of contents because the Wheel of the Year is not the only thing that she covers in this book. This book is really filled with a lot of herbal information through the lens of Druidry, which I have a hard time pronouncing. I don't think I'm saying that correctly. For those of you who know how to pronounce it, please forgive me. The Celtic Lens and Druid Lens. And so really quick, let's go to the table of contents so that I don't just ramble. First chapter actually tells you what Druids are, who they are, who they were, the culture, their geographical location, their origins. It goes through the Celtic tree calendar and the alphabet. Really great, beautiful information, particularly for those of you who are interested and feel a calling towards the Celtic or feel that that's where your people are originally from. It's a great way to dive into it. There's a whole chapter on herbal basics. Remember, she's an herbalist. So all about how to, to put together herbal preparations, tinctures, teas, salves, homeopathic remedies, how to prepare the herbs for the different things that you might use it for. This is a really invaluable bit of information, particularly for those of you who are really interested in herbalism, both because of its healing properties, but also for their magical properties. And so it is certainly not exhaustive. It's not extensive. This is not something that you can read and then walk away from being a complete full-on herbalist, but it's a really lovely foundation. I love that she included that in the book. Then she goes into the entire Wheel of the Year, all eight stations, and each Wheel of the Year she goes into the different Druid lore, mythology, symbolism behind that part of the year, and what was going on on the land during that part of the year, and then which herbs correspond to that Sabbath. Loved it. And for each herb that she covers, she'll give you a turn, so I'll tell you exactly what each herb covers. 
She will tell you what parts of the plant is used, what the herbal uses are, what the homeopathic uses for that plant is, and what the magical uses for that plant is. I loved it. It's a great reference guide for that. So she covers all that for each of the stations of the Wheel of the Year, but then she doesn't stop there. She keeps going. She also talks about herbal alchemy and the planets. So what plants are ruled by each planet? I really I wasn't expecting this in this book and I really appreciate that she did this so you get sun ruled plants moon ruled plants mercury venus mars jupiter saturn all the plants that each of those planets and celestial bodies rule and what that means magically loved it so for instance sun ruled plants solar herbs will tend to be orange reddish orange and yellow they have strong magnetic fields particle rich solar winds and the life nourishing warmth of the sun sustain all forms of life on our planet. So I loved that she gave, I don't even know how to describe it. I am a lover of nuanced layers. Everything has layer upon layer upon layer of wisdom and energetic and purpose and drive and flavor, vibration, frequency, if you will. And so this to me just added to the beauty of plants and the way we use them and how they speak to us. This chapter in particular really spoke to me and I really enjoyed it because it just added, it added more wisdom to the way I'm working with the herbs that I'm working with. And I think that it would do that for you as well. And it also brought that element, right? How everything is intertwined. So you've got the astrology and the herbal, right? There's no separation here. Everything is intertwined, but I love the way these books are falling into my lap in a way that keeps weaving more wisdom into the the meat of all this beautiful stuff. What else? Then she goes into herbs of consecration and purification, the herbs that you would use for different rituals or potions to consecrate or purify, herbs for funerals and death rites, herbs for hand fastings, house blessings, baby blessings, initiation, rites of passage, puberty. So all these different herbs that you would use for all these different things along with examples of how they would be used loved it. Then, as if that's not enough, she in the very back has a couple of tables. There's a pronunciation guide of the Gaelic words used in the book so that you can better read and say them to yourself. There's a resource guide for herbs, magical supplies, Celtic garb, jewelry, accessories, and books, other magical supplies. Uh, there's a bibliography that is fairly extensive, which is great because if you want to go deeper into any of this information, it's here. I enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. I felt that it was incredibly informative. It's a great addition to a reference guide or reference library if you are into herbalism. If you are interested in Celt in the Celtic traditions, if you're interested in Druidry, if you're interested in those things but not in herbalism, there are definitely other books that talk about all of that in a way that will speak more to you. So be, be clear about that. If you're into herbalism and if you're into the Celtic lens, this is a great book. I really, really enjoyed it. Great for references. I've already, before I finished reading it, I had already used it for a reference guide for a couple of exciting new things I'm putting together for you. Yeah, I mean, really, I enjoyed it immensely. I'm surprised. This is a 200 page bookish, 200 and a couple of pages. She packed a lot of information to this book, you guys. So boom, here it is. All the information I will list below. For those herbalists out there, great reference guide. If you've read it, please let me know what you thought. I know a few of you have already read it. I'd love to hear your opinions, what you liked most, what you didn't like most. Yeah, keep the conversation going. I really appreciate you guys when you comment. And I'm looking for references or for recommendations on books that speak to deeper sorcery. I'm diving more and more into Jason Miller's books in the next couple of months. And for those of you who've been watching for a while, you know that I read The Secret, The Sorcerer's Secret by Jason Miller. I love that book. The book was fantastic. And I recommend it to anyone that comes across my, comes across any of these videos and wants a book on deeper magical energetic. So I'm looking for more books like that. If any of you have references for that or recommendations for that, please go ahead and list those below. I would really appreciate that. And that's it. I will see you all next week. Have a wonderful, wonderful week. I will see you on all the social medias and we will talk soon, no doubt. Take care.